House Coronavirus Task Force is coming up, and there's been some encouraging news this week. One key model forecasting far fewer deaths from coronavirus than earlier estimates. But we still need to keep up the social distancing across the country to keep that trend going. The media is not making the situation any better with attacks like this on President Trump. Take a look. Tens of thousands of people who will die in the country or have some of them have already died. More are still going to die mm -hmm. because of Donald Trump's incompetence and lack of leadership. Here we have a president who is exploiting a national crisis to move forward his own agenda, his own revenge, his own profit. <laughs> And it gets worse. MSNBC's Chris Hayes promoting a conspiracy theory that the Trump administration inflated the death toll projections so the president could take a, quote, victory lap when they came in much lower. Greg, I want to start with you. You always feel so strongly about the media. And I wanted to ask you, is there anything that you think the mainstream media will have an appropriate perspective on? I think, you know, I completely understand the political, the politics. It's a team sport thing, and it's like a virus, like some viruses, it's incurable. The only thing that bothers me is that the media is so clearly on one side. I would like to change that. It's never going to happen. Acosta asking about whether Trump had investments in hydroxy, that wasn't as if Trump would risk his reelection, his legacy for a couple of hundred dollars in stock is just moronic. But what's even more <laughs> moronic, it's not even Acosta original. He stole that from the hack buffet known as uh, uh, that dopey duo, Morning Joe. So I think we should start doing contact tracing on really dumb ideas in the media. You know, identify someone <laughs> who's been near somebody who's been infected by a dumb idea and then try to trace it back. So, oh, it starts at MSNBC and then the virus moves to CNN and then moves back to MSNBC. It keeps going around. And if we could stop it, we could prevent more infections. But, but last point. If the result, if this pandemic is far less than what we predicted, it's going to create a swirl of unprovable arguments. So we might as well just get used to it. We're going to have one side saying it was all social distancing, another one saying the fear was oversold, the projections were ridiculous. People will say that Trump saved lives by shutting down travel. Others will say, no, he put econ economy before people. These things are going to go on for the rest of your life. You don't want to get sucked into it because they're all, almost all, unprovable. Yeah. Dana, I wanted to play a video for you and get your thoughts on it. This is what James Carville had to say what Republicans will do to stay in power. Take a look and then we'll get your thoughts. What I do fear of is what you had in Wisconsin, where they try to muck with the election and stop people from voting. This thing in Wisconsin was, was one of the most awful things I've ever seen in my life. You know, just go you, the extent that what they will go to to hold on to power. And it was all about one Supreme Court seat in Wisconsin. They will kill people to stay in power, literally. So you want me to react to that? So, um, OK, <laughs> the Wisconsin thing, I think that clearly there is a lot of criticism that could be thrown that way. I don't know well why they couldn't have worked it out. I know there is blame to be had on both sides, the Republicans in the legislature, the governor being a Democrat, slow to move. They couldn't work together. I do think the most ridiculous thing was you had the Speaker of the House or the, the leadership of the state legislature, a Republican, in full-on protective gear with a mask, doing an interview, telling everybody in Wisconsin that it was perfectly safe to go outside <laughs> and vote. That, I think, opened them up to a lot of criticism. And it's not too early to start thinking about what to do in the future. Um, there are criticisms about mail-in voting, though you have a state like Utah. It's all mail-in. They don't seem to have any problem. Nobody questions it. We can have that debate. Um, and this issue of voter suppression, the Democrats are going to talk about that a lot between now and November. And I think the Republicans have to have a much better answer as to how they're going to try to deal with it. So all of those things are happening. If I could say one thing about the question that Acosta posed to the president about the funding, it reminded me of for eight years, the media would go after Dick Cheney over and over again for investments in Halliburton. He had no investments in Halliburton when he was the vice president. He would not be able to benefit. And it didn't matter how many times you explained this to them in a very logical way. The media just didn't care. They just continued to try to pummel, some, pummel somebody. But I think if I could use a sports analogy, this one at $450, that's the investment. That's what you would call a swing and a miss.
<laughs> Jesse, ABC published a damaging report on President Trump's reaction to this, and then a military official refuted it, and they refused to issue a correction. Will we ever see some type of acknowledgement of the responsibility that they've had in shaping that narrative? Probably not. You didn't see it with Russia. I don't see why you wouldn't see it with this. I mean, if we had today's media during World War II, they would blame FDR for Pearl Harbor instead of the Japanese. They, they probably blame the House Republicans at the time, but you see my point. This is China's deal. China lied. The WHO botched this. The virus, Mother Earth is killing people, not the president. I mean, there's still so much we don't know about this virus. This is an invisible enemy. We shut down the entire U.S. economy. That wasn't aggressive enough. I mean, the, they, they criticized the president for acting too late or not listening to the scientists. Show me in February where Dr. Birx and Fauci said we need to all shelter in place. You can't find it because it didn't happen. You know how many deaths there were in this country from COVID-19 on March 1st? One. Show me one pundit that spoke on television for the need to have the whole country shelter in place. If you can find that person, I'll buy him a round of drinks. But it didn't happen. They were obsessed with Mike Bloomberg at this time. And to Greg's point, you can play with these models and projections however way you want. You could say Trump saved lives. You could say mitigation worked. You could say the models were wrong or the models were updated when new information was put into it. Look at the climate change models. All of them have been wrong. Yet people are obsessed with the climate change models. I mean, I could play this game all day. I could say Barack Obama did nothing while the opioid epidemic cost 200,000 American lives, and that's on him. I could say that, but I won't, because I'm a very classy guy. <laughs> All right, Juan, what are your thoughts on anything you like from what everyone said? Well, let me just, Emily, let me just go back to this business about what happened in Wisconsin. You know, I just thought that was, uh, I just thought that was a, a huge law, I think, was an embarrassment for us as an American people. I don't think people should have to choose between staying healthy and, you know, participating in an election. I thought it was wrong. And, uh, you know, even when there were questions about mail-in voting to the president yesterday, the president said, oh, no, it's terrible. You could see a lot of fraud. And then people said, but, Mr. President, you voted by mail in the last election in Florida. He said, yeah, that's true. I mean, to me, it's just, again, about voter suppression. So, We'll come back to that topic. As to the media, well, I think a lot of what we're hearing there, to me, I would put it in the category, Emily, of not helping us to move forward, not, you know, not helping us to progress and get out of the situation. This thing is so serious. I'd rather not get hooked up in those kind of trivial finger pointing, backbiting, backstabbing. I will say that on a nonpartisan basis, the fact is that we as a country were slow to respond, in specific, the president when he was downplaying the seriousness of it, I think the administration was slow to respond. But let's leave it there and let's now try to pick up pace and do the things that are necessary to get us in the right place. Because I think that we, there's no need for us to get involved in harsh conspiracy theories that don't actually lead us in a more leave us in a more productive place. I you just know, one, back one we point though. In the last he did segment, he did shut I, down oh, okay. travel three days after it was raised. So I I, I mean maybe you could have done it the no, same day. I think I didn't. He, and he got and he got and he no, got criticized. I, what I'm he was called to you racist. Is that there were people. Well, listen. In fact, he was send people who were still coming in. That I think it's more than a half million people still came from China because you had Americans coming back from that area. And you had people coming from Italy. You had people mm -hmm. coming from Germany and from Britain. So it didn't. It, it, let's argue about the effectiveness in another way. I'm not. I'm just saying we, as a country, were slow to respond. And let's focus now on what we can do, because right now, even as we reopen businesses, what we're going to see is that people are slow to get back to the restaurants, slow to get back on an airplane, slow to get back uh, to China the ballpark. Line one. And that's it's what on we can deal with. Enough with the blame game. It's on China.